Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Jer Dooley. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. It's Sunday night and you know what that means. A very good evening everybody to what is episode 13 of the Departure Lounge podcast here on my YouTube channel. The home of aviation podcasts here on YouTube. My name as ever is Paul Whittle and as you can see uh, with the uh, with the background there, there is no Jer Dooley this evening. He's not very well so we're sending our best wishes to him and hopefully he will be back with us next week. However... We have a stand-in co-host um, who is also our resident comment reader. So, for episode 13, welcome Ian Hartley. Thanks, Tom. I'll be, I'll be well, and uh, thanks for having me for tonight. Not a problem. Thanks for uh, thanks for standing in at uh, a short notice. I will talk as much as what Jay does. <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no. Um, but yes, so... Um, usual sort of housekeeping will get off and underway shortly um, but if you have any questions tonight for this evening's guest uh, pop them into the chat um, also say your hellos and we'll get them read out uh, throughout the uh, throughout the evening um, and uh, yeah that is pretty much that's pretty much that so let's get into uh, the housekeeping side of things before we move on um, to sort of the main podcast so as you can see on the top uh, and also in the uh, description below there are the uh, links to the Instagram ch- uh, Instagram page for the channel and of course Twitter and of course a little notification to say subscribe if you haven't um, it was obviously you know if you go follow them it's, it'd be much much appreciated secondly a big sort of nudge in the direction of the channel sponsor airspotters.com who continue to uh, throw out models uh left right and center and um you know with, with such such good service as well um definitely check them out the link to their website is also in the description below and of course if you wish to be a guest on the show at any stage in the future drop us a message on either instagram twitter or even in the comments and we'll get hold of you um pretty much as soon as we can so yes also one last sort of thing happy father's day to all the fathers out there um and of course all the fathers that obviously couldn't be with us today as well so a big happy father's day of course uh, ian you're a father so happy father's day to you thanks very much thank you and uh yeah that is pretty much all the housekeeping for tonight so um what we'll do we'll quickly jump into the comments there's a couple of people there uh, that have sent hello so ian do you want to do the honors yeah i can do yeah so we've got jones's aviation he says hello and or or rose i, I hope i pronounced that right 1506 he says hello uh, and pillow pilot says hi guys <laughs> i'm presuming yeah i'm presuming the other two guys are, are friends of uh, pillow pilot so the the names i've not seen before so hello to you <laughs> Yes, a very good evening, everybody. And, of course, the people that are watching at the moment that haven't commented, don't be shy. Uh, throw your comments into the chat, and we will get them read out as soon as we can. However, let's get on with the podcast, and we are going to jump into, and we're bringing back, rather, a little segment, which is the news. This Week in Aviation. So a couple of topics on the news this evening, um, which have happened throughout the entire week in aviation. Um, just a couple that we have uh, dug out for us to go through this evening uh, before we bring on this evening's guest. So the first of them uh, was the announcement of uh, Southwest Airlines in America. Uh, they celebrated their 50th anniversary this week. So congratulations to them for reaching that milestone. And they've also marked that occasion with one of the best looking liveries I think that's out there at the moment. It's called Freedom One. Um, now this popped up all over Twitter uh, and all over uh, Facebook and of course all the other news outlets uh, that cover aviation um, and it is absolutely stunning. Um, absolutely stunning. Ian, what, what, are we, what are we saying about this one? What can you say about it? Is it 
it, it is absolutely stunning. It, it's, uh, I mean, Southwest. I don't know how many they've done recently, but uh, I think they've done one for every state, haven't they? Um, uh, some of the some of the uh, paint jobs they've done on some of their planes. I think you could do an entire podcast on just Southwest special liveries. They, they've got some absolutely fantastic liveries, and this one is just—it's just outstanding, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely mint, I it's, would say. Yeah, it is absolutely, yeah. absolutely wonderful, and it, it's—you uh, know—they, it, it, like you said, they have done several in the past, um, which mm. are still around. Like uh, ones off the top of my head, uh, Arizona one. Uh, that's that's one of them. Uh, Maryland one, I think, might be another one. Like I said, you yeah, there's, there's quite a few. I've, I've, yeah, I've seen a few on um, Matt Cochran's channel. Pl- yeah, uh, he, he catches quite a few, doesn't he? Yeah, plenty of American spotters that have, that have mm. got the opportunity to catch them. I think New Mexico mm. is another one as well. So, like you said, there's yeah. a, you can do um, you can do an entire podcast um, on uh, on the whole. Um, special livery type thing and you know it might be one to to consider for for the future so but absolutely amazing a fantastic job by southwest it's uh currently on a, a boeing 737 um which uh is a little bit different i think it's the first special livery that they've done which is actually on the 737-800 because the rest of them are all on the 700 so yeah fantastic to get that american flag mm. on there and captured absolutely amazingly yeah, yeah, it looks really nice. That mm. uh, we'll move on to the second new news piece of the evening, and we discussed this sort of uh, a few weeks back, um, where Ryanair were awaiting delivery of their seven three seven Max uh, Max eights, or as they've des- uh, designated them as the eight two hundreds, because they're sort of a higher density aircraft. Well, this week they didn't get one; they got two. Uh, delivered this week um, you can see on the screen um, thank you to uh, SE Josie on Twitter for uh, allowing me to use a picture that's one of the 737 MAX 8s uh, that, that arrived at Dublin during the week <coughs> and it uh, looks like that the, the steady flow of um, the steady flow of uh, MAX 8s will sort of begin to happen for Ryanair as they look to sort of replace their, their older aircraft for sort of the more high density routes <clears throat> so uh so yeah um ian about time well for the for the ryanair max 8s well i think it's about time for uh it's nice to see that the max 8s finally you know it's, it's up and airborne again and they don't seem to be having any problems with it which is fantastic and it's nice to see that an airline like ryanair are um you, you know buying some of these new 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 planes um i think ryanair were the first carrier to get the um 197 seat 737 weren't they that's right i think yes. they're the yeah yeah they were the first carrier to take one of these planes so <clears throat> yep they're gonna cram them in like sardines no problem in one of them aren't they no they they cram them in like sardines on the uh, the older uh, 800s and they'll, they'll do it on the max as well why not Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think Ryanair wanted people to stand up, didn't they? And <laughs> all sorts of stuff. So there we go. <laughs> if you're going to pay for a seat, you might as well pay for an actual seat. Um. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's nice to see. It really, really is. Yes. Um, so yeah, so that's the first two have arrived of what is going to be 210 of the aircraft to be um, delivered to Ryanair over the uh, over the coming years, um, and they're expected to take 12 over this uh, this this sort of summer. Um, six of those for Ryanair, and then six of those for Malta Air, which are the uh, sort of the new subsidiary uh, for uh, for Ryanair for operations in uh, in Malta. So, yeah, it's it's steady and slow, but it'll it'll catch on, I'm sure. And yeah, by 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 that time, all the 210 aircraft will be delivered, no doubt. <clears throat> and uh, lastly, for this sort of week. Um, some news coming from Heathrow um, during the week as well. One that sort of sparked up a whole lot of debate um, in terms of news outlets getting it wrong. Saying that it happened on a runway when you can clearly see it didn't. Um, <clears throat> this was of course the uh, British Airways 787-8 Dreamliner that uh, unfortunately had its uh, nose gear collapse um, while sitting at the gate. Now 
there was no passengers on board. This aircraft was specifically being used for freight. Um, and it turns out that it was a simple sort of error in terms of the uh, locking pin was uh, inserted incorrectly. So, um, yeah, it's <laughs> not good for British Airways, but um, the aircraft has suffered damage. Um, so it'll be out of action for a long time. I don't know how long, but uh, yeah, not not a, not a good uh, not a good week for British Airways, Ian. No, no, not at all. No, <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm thinking with the with the locking pin incident. Is is it manual error? Is it a you know? Is it a mechanical error? Is it a, is it something what the ground crew haven't done correctly? You know, it's you know, it could have further repercussions. I think through the airline industry, if, if this is going to be a problem. Uh, you know, if somebody was connecting that up for a pushback and it collapsed, it would have quite easily killed someone, couldn't it, to be fair? It could have done. Yeah, you know, so it's, I think it's someone that needs to be looked at, really. Yeah, it uh, it's... if somebody had been standing at the wrong place at the wrong time. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, Yeah. so, yeah, not not a good, I mean, you, you, you'll be able to find photos and, and everything, um, you know, all over, all over the internet for sort of more information on it, but... Um, whether you know i say i don't know how long this aircraft will now be out of, of action which is the last thing that british airways need especially while they're operating a lot of uh, freight mm. movements and stuff i mean like i said it happened while they were loading freight onto the aircraft so had that been an issue mm. uh, and, and somebody was sort of standing like i said wrong place wrong time it could have been a lot worse for british airways absolutely yeah and i mean at the front end of a, a 787 it's same with any aircraft it's where all sensitive equipment is as well so yeah all that's gonna have to be looked at and probably replay so that's going to run into tens of thousands isn't it for uh british airways to get that thing back up in air again not uncommon though for yep. uh for this sort of thing to happen um whether it's the nose gear collapsing or sort of the more frequent one is loading uh freight onto the aircraft sort of in an unbalanced way so that i mean i remember i think it was back in 2004 i think there was a eva air md11 freighter that the cargo was loaded incorrectly and then the the plane actually leant backwards and ended up sitting on its tail uh, you know like the back end yeah of the tail. um there, there has been um air, air crash investigation tv programs as well with the same kind of thing where cargo has not been loaded correctly and it, it it's got to be done right hasn't yeah. it yeah and it's it, yeah. It's uh, I'm just trying to think of, of some more sort of uh, examples, really, of um, of this sort of thing happening. But I can't think of top man. The only one I could think of was was that one. Back, um, I'm pretty sure it was 2004. Uh, well, are, I, I forgot which plane it is now, but they have some. I don't know whether it's one of Antonov's or something like that, but they have a prop, don't they? What they stick under the back to make sure that it doesn't, you know, lift up. You know, so the front doesn't lift up when they're loading the cargo. Yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a special yeah. way of loading it. That's the thing. There's a special way of loading it, and um, yeah, obviously it just it wasn't followed on. Well, I mean, like I said, it was just that the locking pin wasn't in correctly, and the the weight of the freight must have caused it to, uh, yeah, to, to collapse. Just so, collapse. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. What we know is that the um, the uh, UK's Air Accident Investigation Branch, um, or AAIB for short. Um, sent the team to Heathrow to investigate why why this happened. Um, so yeah, so fingers crossed. We'll know in the next few days um, exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> but uh, that it's just is... one it's one thing after another, isn't it? With seven eight seven. Yeah, and I mean, considering this is more of like a human error, I think in terms of yeah, just not putting the locking pin in place properly. Um, and uh yeah it's not sort of like a mechanical sort of thing at least that's not you know it's, it's, it, you can speculate about it but i suppose we'll just have to wait and see what the report comes out with absolutely uh, yeah and, yeah and obviously they'll make sure that, that never sort of happen well you, you can't stop it from happening but sort of for a while anyway that it doesn't happen again and especially yeah uh, not with uh not not with british airways but uh, but yes, that will that will do it for the news uh, this week. Uh, we'll be back again with some more news next week, uh, with no doubt things happening that will uh, that will report. So what we we'll do <clears throat> now? We'll quickly run back into the uh, comments um, and say a few hellos to people that have joined us just now. 
and uh, then we'll go ahead with bringing our guest on. So, uh, Ian. Yeah, we've got Steve Plains. Um, he's just saying hi to us both, and he's saying that he, he hopes that your sunburn didn't cause too much grief last week. Now, <laughs> I hope it did, but... <laughs> Uh, well, if you must know, but, if you must know, last week for anyone that did hasn't sort of you know, not knowing what that is, last week I went out to Newquay, got all the uh, Air Force uh, Air Force One and G Seven Summit uh, departures and stuff. You can see the video on the channel, um, and I got sunburnt like you would never th- believe, and I was you imagine a lobster looking at me going, "Yes, yeah, sod that." Um, so. At the moment, my arms are peeling. My face is done peeling. Backs of my legs are red still, um, but I'm not in pain. So, <laughs> so yeah, doing a lot better than I was last week. I had to take two days off work as well uh, last week because of it, because my legs were so like stiff, I could not stand straight. So, and I wasn't going to risk it. So yeah, I'm doing all right now. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days. Um, Rob Brown playing spot in evening, guys. Greetings from north of the border. Hello, hello. Um, so good evening to you, Rob Brown's plane spotting, and he was saying that uh, there was a cargo lux um, 747 which had a similar incident back in Shanghai in 19, sorry in 2006. Oh, interesting. So, so, yeah, so it is uncommon. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, sorry, it is common for it to to sort of happen. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I can't think of of any more that's off top of my head apart from that one I mentioned. Um, I didn't even know about that cargo lux one, but. I'm, I'm sure throughout the evening people will post. If you can think of any uh, instance that happened, chuck them in the chat. We'll read them out throughout the show. <clears throat> but uh, yes, let's um, let's get on with the um, guest side of things uh, by introducing uh, our guest for this week. This week's special guest. So this week's guest is an avid uh, flight sim user and also a user of VATSIM, which we are going to be talking about this evening, um, and also various different programs and accessories that VATSIM uh, brings. So uh, welcome to the podcast, Alex Dawson, also known as Pillow Pilot. A very good evening. Evening, Alex. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? Not too bad. Not I'm too good, bad thank you. Not too bad at all. Great. So, um, yeah, if anyone's got any questions for uh, Alex in regards to that sim or flight sim in general, um, throw them in the chat and we'll get them read out um, and for him to answer throughout the uh, throughout the evening. But, um, Alex, do you want yeah. to just sort of introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about yourself for those that might not know who you are? Hello. Well, I'm a, I'm Pillow Pilot. I have a small YouTube channel, Pillow Pilot. Um, I, I mainly focus on MSFS 2020. I do a couple of senior reviews. We mostly stream, uh, enjoy lots of flights around the world. We've just embarked on our um, round-the-world tour, as it were, taking us hopefully around the world uh, in several aircraft to, to see all the beautiful scenery of MSFS. A couple of tutorials on there. But, um, yeah, we just sort of enjoy flying on MSFS there. Uh, small discord i've sort of built up a community hopefully on there so you can join that i think in the link um but yeah i'm pillow pilot hello <laughs> fantastic and yes so throughout the uh, throughout the evening we'll we'll put the links to everything um in the chat for those that might want to sort of uh, check out some of some of alex's stuff um and uh, also by joining his uh, discord um server which i'll put a link in the, the uh, in the description uh, of the video um before we do kick off, uh, some people are probably wondering why there's no uh, picture of you, Alex. Um, do you want to just sort of tell them what you told me? Well, I, I haven't really done a face reveal on the channel. Um, I don't know. I just, yeah, I haven't really done a face reveal on the channel. So, I don't know. I quite like the logo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, when we do a face reveal, then, then um, that will be good. But, uh, for yeah. now, just the logo. We don't ruin anything on this channel. So, uh so we went along with it so yeah so because alex hasn't done a face reveal on his uh streams um it'd be wrong of us to uh <coughs> excuse me it'd be wrong of us to uh to sort of show the face and then ruin any sort of face reveal uh in the future so 
Um, so, so that would be why. Um, anyway, let's get into the questions um, and uh, the chat about Flight Sim and VATSIM. So do you want to sort of explain to everybody what VATSIM is for those that might not know what it is? Yeah, well, um, so VATSIM is the Virtual Air Traffic Simulation Network. So um, aircraft, yeah, if any of you guys have Flight Sims, maybe FSX, X-Plane, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, we can connect to the network on their servers um, and, and join the network that is VATSIM, where there are controllers online um, acting as real air traffic control, and you fly as you would real life, being as realistic as possible, uh, and you talk to them via a client we have called vPilot, uh, and, and they control you and tell you what to do exactly like they would in real life. It simulates uh, as close as it can be to real life as you talk to them um, just like you would a controller. So that's the idea. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's really good. We've got thousands and thousands of members currently, um, which makes it really make good. There's a couple of other options as well as Vatsim, such as uh, IVAO, um, but Vatsim's by far the most popular, so therefore it's probably the best one to fly on as you get controllers almost everywhere in the globe. Yeah, Vatsim is definitely um, sort of... It's one of those things where if you know about it, then you sort of know how good it can be but if you don't know about it it kind of makes you think actually i well, wouldn't mind actually having to go at that because it's something that i've yeah. been looking into but i've never sort of um never sort of taken that extra step to to, to jump onto it um how long have you been sort of using uh that sim well so i really got into it during lockdown of course um about you know five or six months ago um it, sort of when i had loads of time on my hands during lockdown it takes quite a lot of effort, but if you put like uh, you know a bit, a bit of time into it, suddenly you're you're into a whole world of aviation where you can meet people, talk to people, and suddenly you're away with it really. Um, so I got into about five, five months ago. Since then, I've built up uh, a, a lot of hours, probably more than I should have. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent about five hundred hours on it so far, which is quite a long time to be honest. That's a bit too much. So yeah, so you know, it's it's really really good. I can't recommend it enough. Um, spend yeah. most of my time on there yeah fantastic yeah definitely i mean 500 hours that's like that's proper commitment that is that's a bit too much <laughs> yeah <laughs> i thought some yeah. of my hours on yeah. different games that i play have been uh, a bit much i won't mention games but i've got about a thousand odd hours on them and i thought that was that was a bit much but um <laughs> but yes <laughs> um so we've got a couple of uh comments in there so we'll quickly jump over to them um yeah. we'll go with uh oh rose uh one uh, 1506 who says um when is the face reveal oh <laughs> do you have a well point uh, i sort of do i don't know i sort of just go along with whatever but um i don't know it'd be nice to get a couple more subscribers i think before we go for a face reveal let's uh, see if we can break through some proper marks and then then maybe a face reveal will come along <laughs> if you want it go subscribe to his channel <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah um we also have uh jones aviation who was talking uh, when we were talking before about in the news um or after that rather uh he says that he was at nuki two days before the g7 aircraft came in and it was tipping it down we had to leave before they came in the weather wasn't great uh, i think the only best day we had was the departure day i think that was probably the the, the only day that was decent so so the, the gods were on our side when we we were there. So, um, yeah, it, it was not good weather when uh, like Air Force One and that came in. Um, and Ryan Bomar says hello. So hello to everybody, of course, watching, and hello to Ryan Bomar. Um, and of course, uh, Crip Gang Bucket also says good morning. Um, so good morning to you, wherever you're from. Let us know in the chat so we can kind of gauge uh, whereabouts you are from. Um, now we were chatting off air. Um, about uh, obviously like VATSIM and things like that and Ian brought up a very good um, sort of I, thought, I suppose it's like a side application I guess to VATSIM Ian do you want to sort of just mention that? Or was it the um, yeah I've, uh, I had it I had it in front of me now and I've lost it <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah it's called Fly, it's called Fly to Wear, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Now for, for people listening to this podcast now you're obviously all aware of things like flight radar 24 and and adsb exchange and what have you but there is um 
a similar kind of thing. And what's well, well, do you want to explain it, Alex, rather than me trying to mumble my way through? I think that'll be the easiest thing to do. Well, no worries. So, uh, similar yeah. um, is what it is. There's a couple of options. That spy. Um, there's a couple like like this, and basically, uh, it's um, it's exactly flight radar, but for um, for Vatsim. So you can see if I drop a link in. Actually, I've just found it there. Drop a link in for you guys. You can see where aircraft are moving around, um, exactly like you would on flight radar. It also shows where controllers are con currently controlling. So whilst you're flying, you can click on any aircraft exactly like you would on flight radar. It'll tell you what plane they are, where they're going to, where they're coming from. Um, what's their call sign, what plane they are, how long they've been going for, the route they're taking. Um, it'll give you loads and loads of information because it, it, it's, 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 we have to put it in for the network anyway when you're flying. So it's just a really great way of seeing what they're up to. And you can see who's flying around. Uh, at one point during lockdown, you could go on and um, there'd be more people on here than there was on flight radar. So absolutely amazing. Um, really, really interesting when you just want to have a look around at what's going on, who's, who's controlling. So when I'm flying, quite often I have it open. I see what controllers are online, who I might need to talk to um, when sort of going along. Because uh, quite often, you know, you don't quite know who you're supposed to be contacting when you're flying in places of the world that haven't been to before. Um, it's a great way of just seeing, oh, yeah, there I am. That's where I need, that's who I need to contact. So really quite a great app. Um, there's quite a few of them around, but uh, really, really good. It is a really, really good app. Um, the, the other thing I was going to ask you as well now, when I play Flight Sim, I play FSX. I don't play the fs220 for various reasons i'm not a fan of it and all the rest of it now can i how how do i connect my flight sim to that sim how would i go about that so uh you literally search up that sim online and it'll take you to the that sim home web site. you make a, an account um with your email address and everything uh, and then you have to do a short 10 question um multiple choice quiz uh, to test that you're a competent person <laughs> and you're not going to just sort of mess around, you know, to test that you're, you sort of, in, you know what you're doing when it comes to aviation. Uh, once you've done that, each, um, uh, each uh, flight simulator has a different client, as we call it, which is the sort of link between VATSIM and your, um, and your flight simulator. Yeah. Um, everyone has a different one. So X-Plane has X-Pilot. FSX and 2020 you actually share the same one called vpilot and you take a link download it and you then put in all your account details into that app and you can you click connect through there and suddenly you're on the network um and actually it will show you the frequencies the people um who you need to, you know the different people online that with their frequencies on the left um it has a little chat box in the middle so you can message sort of other pilots and ask some stuff um and it's, uh, yeah, that's that's what we use. Each one has a different one, of course, because it's slightly different. Lucky um, Microsoft keep theirs the same. It's actually um, FSX 2004 and uh, MSFS all share the same one, um, which is quite helpful, helpful little idea they've come up with. Um, but exactly, it's just a little app that links you between the VATSIM network. Um, and of course, you can yeah. connect from anywhere in the world. So, yeah. Right, right. Because what, what what bothering me was, uh, if I was on the approach to Manchester Airport on FSX, and you was on the approach to Manchester Airport in FS220, would we be on the same that same server? And and you know, would we be being controlled by the same person? Yes. So it's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. real life. You have ground, yeah. you know, Taran approach. Um, but I would my aircraft you'd see is like a not static aircraft, but you know, you know, one of your models, you know, model matchmaking as it were. So in FSX, you have static aircraft, don't you, that look like aircraft? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'd be one of them. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'd be one of your AI aircraft that they look like. Um, yeah, it'd actually be me. Uh, and so they have different servers. You know, they've got US servers, Russian servers, uh, British servers, but they all connect to the same network. So no matter where you are in the world, you, I could be in the American side, so and someone else could be in the UK. And we'd still be on that sim. You'd be able to right, see it right. Still. Yeah, so it's really, really clever stuff. And the, the big question: Is it free? It is completely free. That's what's really impressive. Um, you Bargain. Could, you could. You, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a northerner. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. It's utterly free. Yeah, it's amazing. Really brilliant, is. brilliant. So, how, how is it funded then? Is there is there some kind of donation page or something like that uh, you can donate so simaware the app you had you can donate through to that sim through there um yeah 
but it's really not. I mean, most of it's voluntary. I'm I'm sort of in the VAT Caribbean division, um, and uh, and it's all voluntary. Everyone volunteers to do to train new people. Everyone, everyone volunteers to to be head of that division. You know. Yeah. It's, um, it's really really good. It's all voluntary, which is amazing. Right. Okay. So if you're on the um, you're on the Caribbean this. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if it's, so you're you're in Puerto Rico, aren't you? You're doing. Um, um, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, the, the airport in Puerto Rico. Yeah, Why yeah. did you choose that specific region? <laughs> um, it got. Rec- I had a friend who um who controls down there, and he sort of was like pushing me to go for there. Of course, you can you can train in the UK, but you know, imagine how many people there are that want to train in the UK. So your waiting list is a good year or a couple of months to actually get training as to be an ATC controller. To be a pilot, yeah. you don't need training, but um, to be a controller, you have to have get some training. And um, in San Juan, the queues were much, much lower. Yeah, I can imagine it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, definitely. Uh, I had a you know a recommendation saying yeah it's a great place, so I was like, all right, so headed on over there, and it's uh, it's really good, it's working out really well. Happy days. And how do you do your training? Uh, so I have a very, very kind voluntary person who uh, he's head of training in our area, and what he'll do is he um. He volunteers out of his own time, takes time off, and he so we have a calendar. And you go on a website, you book when you're free, and he should be free at that same time because he's put that as available. And um, you can book with him and sort of say, "Hello, I wanna, I wanna go here," and then you do training with him, and he'll teach you everything you need to know. So get your client, your ATC client, open to see where planes are. Tells you each airport's different, of course. You know, Gatwick has different departures to. Manchester or something like that you know every every airport's different different taxiways and everything so you get yeah. trained on specific airports some some of it's transferable to other places but uh, that's yeah so you have to get training from him and he he spends all his time training you it's amazing wow yeah 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 you won't think that uh you, you know for, for I don't know you, just, you won't imagine that people would want to put that uh, amount of time and, and dedicate themselves so much into something um for nothing exactly, particularly yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. and to do that's brilliant yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that's fantastic. That so, Tom, I'll hand back over to you. Yeah, I was just uh, sorry. Just about no, no, you're right. Just the uh, about the whole training and and that. Um, from what I sort of gather, you've got sort of um, sort of is it uh, like pilot ratings and things like that? Yes, there's pilot ratings. Um, I haven't looked in much into them to be honest. Uh, I just noticed a comment in the chat. Um, volume levels nearly impossible to hear, Alex. Um, do you want to- I don't know. Sorry, I'll turn myself off a bit. I just noticed that. Sorry. Just give me a second. Hopefully, that should be a little bit better. Um, but anyway, sorry. Yes. So, control controller ratings are different. So you get, you know, you get your basic training, which allows you to control on the ground and be a person that shuffles planes around on the ground, um, and you you clear people, clearance delivery, uh, and then you have to do more training to be a tower controller and more training to go up the sort of levels up to being a center controller. But for pilot, you can actually take some stuff you do in Vatsim and help you towards your PPL, I think. I haven't really looked into it as much. You guys uh, probably know more than me. You can find it out on the website. But, uh, yeah. Well, so I was just looking uh, looking before we came on the uh, on the stream there. It looks like you got about five different uh, pilot ratings by looking at things like P0, which is a basic Vatsim member, um, P1, yeah. which is your private pilot license, P2, which is instrument rating, P3, which is a commercial multi-engine license, um, and P4, which is an airline transport license. So I imagine you would go through the same sort of training as you would if you were, I suppose, training to uh, become like a, a real pilot, I suppose. I think so, yeah. I think um, there's, also, of course, always people in the world that want to help you train. Um, yeah, so that is definitely how it works, I think. Uh, some of it, I think, is transferable into the real world. I'm not quite sure, to be honest, though. Uh, so don't take my word for that one. I haven't really looked into pilot training because, of course, if you do your basic test, you can then fly wherever you want. So, you know, you don't need. I think there's a minimum requirement for flying into JFK, um, but that's that's about it. So you don't actually need anything. So I've never really looked into that sort of area. Oh, okay. Sadly. That's um, that is that's that's if fascinating actually to. because it's the way that you yeah. sort of cross the two over. Um... I think because it's not only that that you obviously you do your your pilot training and stuff, but like say because not only do you do that, but you're also like as as Ian mentioned before, part of the um, you know air traffic control side of things. 
So you can also do your, your type ratings for that. So you've got S1, which is tower trainee. Um, it says no no particular uh, competent... Compen- I can't say that word. Competency. Competencies, we'll go with that. Uh, can only control to tower level as per division restrictions. Uh, S2, which is uh, tower controller. Um, yeah. Validated to control delivery, ground and tower facilities except procedural tower. Uh, S3, which is TMA controller, which is validated to control all facilities up to approach level. Uh, you see one, which is en route controller, so validated to control all available facilities, including center. And then, of course, you see three, which is a senior controller, which is a special rating awarded to members at the discretion of their logical region slash division for seniority slash recognition. So as well as doing you know like say you, you learn how to do the whole atc sort of thing and then you know you you almost get recognized for doing it virtually and it's it's quite a little you do. Uh, it's, it's a nice little incentive it's definitely an incentive i mean you know you're never done as it were really because even when you get to the top you you know you want to move on and move on there's more you can do um you can always be working your way up really so it's really really great because it, it teaches people to be professional actually because it gives them that motive to not mess around do it properly and yeah, you can go somewhere. Which is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen a lot of people on uh, on YouTube. Um, if I'm going to drop some names, uh, people like Air Force Proud ninety five. Um, he from time to time will do uh, sort of a, a short flight with with Fat Sim. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, that's sort of what got me a little bit sort of interested in it because it'd be like imagine doing a proper flight and then you know doing a flight on, on flights and actually talking to people and, and engaging that sort of side of things i just think it's um fascinating absolutely fascinating and it's, it's something i'm gonna put a lot more sort of research in and maybe try for myself and see if it's see if it's something i can sort of get along with but um it's definitely something that i think you would recommend to people um and that i would recommend to people in terms of giving it a go uh, for anybody that might be a, a, a flight simmer or there may be people watching that might actually, um, that might actually uh, use uh, Vatsim as well. So if you do, let us know and we can give you a shout. But um, in regards to your um, air traffic control uh, rating, what rating yeah. are you? <laughs> so I am an S1 uh, officially tower trainee, so I can do d- delivery and ground. Okay. However, I have just finished my um, tower exams, so I've got an exam tomorrow, actually, final one, practical, um, and then uh, yeah, and then and then I should be tower controller, which is pretty amazing. What? Well, so you've actually got to take like like, phys- like physical exams? Yeah, you have to do two written ones. You have to get eighty percent or higher. Um, if you fail it, you have to wait a week. So that was a bit stressful. Um, and then you have to do a practical one, so an hour and a half on something called Sweatbox, which is a simulation of Vatsim. So, you know, your instructor controls the traffic, tells the, the traffic what to do, and you just, in this Discord call here, would say, say what you would be saying to the aircraft, but just to him, and then he answers as a plane, pretending to be one, and tells the planes where to go and what to do. So you can have much more aircraft than you would on the Vatsim network. So, you know, I'll, in that time, an hour and a half, control about, you know, 200, 100 aircraft, which is way more than you might be able to get on the network. Wow. I don't know about you, Ian, but I'm learning a hell of a lot this evening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and re- you know, regarding the exams and things, I was thinking about this while you were talking just then. Um, it, it's quite good that you have to do exams and that type of thing because it stops, it, it stops people who just want to muck around even attempting to do it. You, I think you've got to be really dedicated to it, haven't you, to... Um, you know to want to do it um it's taken me a long i've been doing so i started five months ago on vatsim or so six months so and since three months ago i've been working to get where to i am now Um, yeah sort of other options to vatsim such as ivao you can hop on immediately you don't even have to do a test and you can be a controller so of course your controllers are a lot more not not as experienced don't quite know what they're doing maybe so you can be assured that even someone who it's their first time controlling on vatsim has got that vast experience from so much, you know, pressure, training, exams, that they're going to be competent, you know, they're going to be almost as good as a real controller. 
Yeah, which, really well, which I think I think you have to be because um, when you see some of these flight simulators, I know me and Tom play it, and I play it on my laptop, and Tom plays it on his his computer when he has a, you know a, a spare hour or two or whatever. But yeah. you see some of these setups, what some of these dimmers have, and they, they dedicate a full room, don't they? And you have an airplane cockpit in the bedrooms and things like that, don't yeah. they? And they're, they're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on what is. Basically, it's a game, isn't it? But they take it that seriously that they, they want a decent ATC, don't they? So they, they want somebody like oh, like yourself, yeah. Alex, from Vatsim to do the job properly to make, you know, to, to validate their, you know, um, investment, really. 100%. Um, I actually started out uh, my sort of first flying experience on simulators was in Flights of Turns 4 with a cockpit, full full cockpit, me and my dad actually built. <laughs> oh, wicked. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, you know, built that and used that. And uh, we used to fly in 2004. I hadn't, I hadn't discovered Vatsim at that point, so used the normal ATC. And, of course, even they sometimes get it wrong, the sort of, you know, box standard ATC where you click the numbers to get them to say stuff. Um, so I 100% agree. If you've spent all that money, you definitely want someone that's competent and knows what they're doing and is experienced enough to make it real make add that realism because oh, absolutely yeah yeah i know i've had a few yeah yeah i know i've had a few issues with um atc on the uh, fsx and it's shocking sometimes it really is it really is you're like what? <laughs> what it, it is it's, it's terrible he sent me some <laughs> i don't know it's, it's awful um it's because it's the in-game the one... side of things isn't it it's, 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 it's... yeah the in-game it's one is terrible yeah it really is of, of the actual flight sim yeah. that, i mean yeah. You, you say you've had like issues and stuff. I've had one or two issues where it, if I'm on approach to somewhere and all of a sudden like it just seems to just bug out and then I'll be like 6,000 feet but heading in the completely wrong direction because I'm still waiting for instructions to approach. So I have to try yeah, and, but and change all that. So that happens for me on a very, very rare occasion. But I think in order to, to sort of rectify that and to be able to use something like Vatsim, where you can actually yeah. talk to somebody about like and and actually you know uh, engage with somebody and not have to rely on pressing one for instruction two for this instruction three for that instruction you know i think that appeals to a lot of yeah. people and hopefully we are giving them sort of an insight the fact that you you haven't got to pay for that sim but obviously you've got to put a bit of work in if you want to sort of um you know gain gain your um your you know, type ratings and things like that, which is what obviously what we've just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, um, you just cool. get that assurance with Vatsim that it's going to be proper. They're going to tell you what to do. They're not going to miss you. You know, it very, very rarely happens when because it's a human, of course, so they forget occasionally. But um, you know, it, it, it's they're not going to make mistakes as much as maybe something goes wrong. You know, there's nothing really you can do about it. It'll you just ask them, can you send me this way? So, oh yeah, so. So yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely fascinating. Uh, we'll pause there just short, uh, just quickly, um, yeah. and we'll we'll jump back into uh, the comments um, because we've got quite a few that we'll go through. Um, so, uh, Ian, do you wanna do, you wanna do the honors? Yeah, I'm just looking at them now. Um, Steve Plains has asked you, do you actually have any ambitions to uh, work in ATC? And if well, so, where at? <laughs> yeah. So actually, my um, I, I'd like to be a pilot. Def, that's that's my real ambition. Maybe, you know, RAF or or um, commercial airline pilot. But uh, yeah, ATC has definitely become a real option with Vatsim. Actually, you know, it really has inspired me actually to go. You know, ATC is amazing. That'd be, that'd be incredible. So, as I live in the UK, so Nats, um, you know, would would be the option. I think, uh, and Heathrow, of course, the goal. So that'd be your ideal airport to work at Heathrow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. Jonesy's Aviation um, is that is that Teamspeak that you're using? I'm, I'm, oh, I'm not sure what Teamspeak. Team no, yeah, no, it's in terms of our chat. It was to do with the um, all right, uh, the all volume right. levels. No, we don't don't use uh, don't use Teamspeak. A bit confusing. <laughs> oh, Jonesy's Aviation again. I'm training on my S1, and I have 160 hours on that sim. All thanks to Alex. Thanks, mate. And I don't think that was sarcastic at the end. I think he was actually thanking you. <laughs> the way you said that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much, James Aviation. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and Rob, Rob Brown, plane spotting. 
He's always found FSX memory resource heavy and required compromise with graphics, etc. How does MSFS compare? Mm. I'm gonna. I'll just. Yeah. If he, well, I going to say if he had problems with FFX, he's gonna have problems with two twenty with twenty twenty, isn't he? Yeah, I'll quickly <laughs> uh, jump in and say that. He is 100% correct in terms of uh, FSX being memory resource heavy. Like, I mean, my, my, my PC runs really well. Really, really well. It will play any game. But FSX, you go into a busy airport and it will sort of start to bug out very quickly. And um, it, it can be annoying. And I've always sort of thought to myself, if that's the case and if busy airports will bug out on a game that's like 15 years old like flight sim 2020 has got no hope <laughs> in running on the absolutely on the thing especially know, the, I... the fact that it runs off of uh is it bing bing it uses like bing yeah. maps or something like that so it has so to constantly that. use yeah has yeah. to constantly use uh memory and, and 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 things like that and especially wi-fi as well to to be able to ping everything in so well, uh, yeah wi-fi it'll actually reduce your lag because it can balance the streaming and data graphic streaming with the wi-fi rather than your computer memory which is quite interesting so if you have good wi-fi you know there's a little bit of hope because it will actually run slightly smoother i live in devon ah. good wi-fi don't 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 exist <laughs> i know i've got um on, on my laptop when i want to play fsx i've got a 16 gig ram and i know that when i look at the ram usage on it it can be using eight gig on an FSX flight, Crazy. which I, I find is huge for, like you say, Tom, a game what's so old that it can use so mm. much memory up. But um, I know with FFX, with, with FS2020, I can play that on my laptop as well. But I can't, I can't play it properly on the ultra settings. I have to come down and, like you say, compromise on graphics quality, even though I've got good Wi-Fi as well. Um, yeah. It's... it's it, it, it's just so consuming. You really need, yeah, yeah. you know, top-notch gear, don't you, to play it properly. Yeah. It is unbelievably yeah. consuming. Mm. I, I don't know, almost no, almost no one I know runs it on ultra. It's, yeah, you always run high, and sort of a blend of high and ultra, maybe. It's, yeah, it's an unbelievably the, hungry game. They've always, is, like, Flight Sim have always pushed the boundary of what computers can do. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, are, there are a lot of compromises you can do, like moving traffic and things like that. There are things that you don't really need, and, and, and even tree rendering and stuff like that. You, you can turn a lot of the graphic settings down to make the game a lot more playable than what it is. But I think with, with the 2020 version of Flight Sim, it's visually stunning, and, and I, think that's what, I think that's what you want from the game, isn't it? Well, I'm just looking at your sort of replay in the background of the stream, and that is... You know, I was doing that earlier, and it is, it's very amazing what they can do. They really do capture it almost exactly like that. It's Yeah, it's very impressive. Um, mm. so, you know, some people argue it's a bit you know, cartoony, which I, I can understand. It can, it can be at times, but it's still absolutely amazing with detail. And as more aircraft get released, I think it'll become the dominant sim. Um, I think I think it will. Be. Don't, don't you think, though, um, at, at the point of release, it was more visual than playable and would you say it's still that that that, that sort of balance now i think we've passed that balance a bit now i when it first released 100 definitely more sort of you know your your gta flight sim or something like that i mean it wasn't so much as explain fsx not serious level you know you're hitting um yeah yeah definitely but uh with the mods that have been released so like the fly by wire ac2nx i'm sure if you play microsoft you've heard of that it's pretty that's just amazing. That adds so much detail. That is now just as good as something from X Plane or FSX. Now that is absolutely amazing. PMDG with their DC6. I know it's DC6, but that is incredible. Um, it's we're really sort of getting to the point where planes that are being released are very, very good. Um, yeah. Really how amazing. how do you get on with the? Um, do you know the Garmin glass cockpits? The, how do you get on with them? Ah, Garmin glass cockpits. Yeah, well, I, I do mostly my flying in the 320 and airliners. But um, when we fly, when I fly in the Garmin's, they're, they're all right. I find them a bit confusing. But uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I do too. Yeah, 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 I can't do it. Yeah, I can fly the older stuff. Yeah, but when I see one of those Garmin cockpits, I just tend to go back to what I was doing before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry, Tom. Do you want to go back onto topic? Um. Yeah. No. I was just going to say there's a uh, 
question uh, in there about Joe uh, from Travelino blog saying no Joe today. Uh, no Joe today because uh, he is uh, under the weather um, and uh, taking the week off. Uh, but he will be back with us next week. Um, and like we said at the top of the show, we are uh, sending out uh, best wishes for him to sort of feel better. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, get better soon. And, uh, yeah, he'll be back with us next week. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so talking on, uh, on on flight sims, we'll, we'll move slightly away from Vatsim very, very quickly. Um, how are you enjoying uh, the new, uh, well, saying new, it's been out for a while now, um, the, the flight sim 2020? That is absolutely amazing. It was my way into VATSIM, really, because uh, it's so... You, if you have FS2020, it's so accessible to get into VATSIM um, and be off and away, really. Um, and so I, that was just absolutely amazing. That was definitely the way in. Uh, getting along with it well. The only problem is, I think, I find you can't have a cockpit as so. So, you know, those people that spend lots of money, as we were saying earlier, having a full flight deck made, you can't use that with it currently. So, okay. for me, I have the TCA pack, officer pack, um, that I run, you know, you have a seat, stuff like that. I try and sort of make it as real as possible, but you're not, you can't, you can't do what you could do with FSX, which was have a full flight deck set up, you know, really stuff like that. Amazing for, for prepare 3d kind of level stuff like that. Um, so, but it, I really find it absolutely amazing because it looks lovely. There's so many stuff you can add on at the moment. And if you fly the 320 Neo, there's a beautiful, beautiful, like a 32 nx for that lovely liveries that come out for it. And so it's just, you really do feel, I often fly around the UK as EasyJet, and I really do feel a bit like an airline pilot. You really are. It's really real. It's yeah, because there's, um, there's a huge uh, livery pack that came out for the, uh, for the 320 um, to sort of add a bit of, um, bit of realism, I suppose, if you didn't want to fly around in the Airbus livery um, mm. the, the whole time and you had like EasyJet, uh, like Delta, like loads. Like, you could see pictures from everybody when it came out like you know there was airlines yeah. that don't even operate like the 320 that you could put liveries on to and, and it was it, yeah. it was a nice little sort of bit of realism um ian and Definitely, i obviously yeah. we we are more fsx than flight in 2020 we haven't really got on well with um 2020 but i'm sure down the line once because it's still sort of really in its infancy that we'll we'll probably give it a go and and, and go from there but mm. yeah I, I i urge you to do that yeah i mean the the um the downloads are getting bigger and bigger what, what's it up to now about i think about 150 odd gig or something like that with if you have add-on lots of add-on sceneries like me because i do a couple of reviews and things i've got a lot of add-on stuff it's up to about 194 gigabytes <laughs> i just check it it's, ab it's absolutely huge that is crazy yeah so with massive like, isn't know, it aircraft add-ons i've got scenery loads and loads of stuff that's yeah. 194 that is yeah it's pretty amazing that is massive that is i think that's part of its problem and that's why hopefully just looking at the comments when it gets released on xbox will make it you know sort of hopefully make it better um because one of the mistakes they've made is it you need an absolutely amazing pc to be able to run it for storage for you know graphic processing absolutely everything um and that kind of restricts it from you know the vast majority of people because you know not all of us have a you know, 33 grand pc no that's it make, yeah so. absolutely not I don't and i think hopefully really, they took it's that released on xbox yeah they, they really didn't i don't think um but hey, if it's released on xbox you know maybe they found a way to sort of bring it down a bit and bring it on xbox that'll just boost its popularity hopefully maybe more more people then will work on it you know maybe get more you know i don't know but uh, i'm just think if they found a way to release it on Xbox so that it can run on Xbox, um, that's going to be pretty good. So. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they do, actually, uh, or how the game yeah, runs on the Xbox, and whether it's just a carbon copy of the PC. Um, I was wondering about add-ons, you know, how are you going to, you know, exactly, yeah, third-party stuff, you know, I get loads of add-ons from online, you download, put in the community folder. I'm not sure how they're going to do that on Xbox, so I'll be interested to see. Yeah, the only way that I can... The only way that I can think that they might do it, and I'll, I'll go slightly off topic with this, um, is there's a, a, a football game that I play that you can mod it on the PC, and that's what I've been doing for the last sort of week or so when mm. I play it. You can mod it on the on the computer, but if you're on the Xbox, you can't mod it. On the PS4, you can. If you've got the Xbox, 
you can't really add things to it because of the way that the console is now whether that's going to change with obviously the the newer um the newer Series Xbox X. yeah and that and they they will allow for certain things like that or whether you got to go through a rigorous like stressful way of doing it like usbs and 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 things like that or buy through the well, marketplace exactly, or, or or things like that but you can't just yes. hop onto a website like a a, a, a simviation or a flightsim.com or anything like that download a freebie yeah. and then you're good to go so will it yeah limit... and mods are this game actually you know it's, yeah i say and box standard it's, it's not that good you know you need mods so mm. yeah it... I'm I'm fascinated by it, but it's obviously for the the new gen Xbox One, which again I don't have, so I, it's not something that, you know, unless you've got one, then you'll be able to kind of uh, try it out and stuff. So I'll end up probably sticking with PC down the line, but yeah, it's yeah, I'll, I'll be fascinated to see what they what they do with the with the console version. Yeah, I think if you've got uh, a PC, don't go Xbox, but it'd be interesting to see what they do do. Yeah, I think part of the um, Xbox release of Flight Sim, I think it was just because, um, to be fair, they, they, they've introduced the new consoles and they've got no big titles for them yet, have they? So Flight Sim, when that was, you know, it was massive, massive, massive news for people who like Flight Sims. Um, the first Flight Sim to come out in years and all the rest of it, and it was going to be this, that and the other. So if we, if we married that Flight Sim up to the new Xbox, and then there's our first big title, what we're going to bring out for, for the Xbox. Now, when I play Flight Sim on my, on my computer, I use an Xbox controller with it, and I've played um, FX 2020 with my Xbox controller, and it's it's doable, and you can fly a plane. You can only fly it in basic. You can't, you, you can't really do anything inside. You know, you, you need... I don't know whether you know what what controls you use, but using my Xbox controller and using my mouse at the same time, I can you know work everything I need to work to fly a plane perfectly adequately. But I think with Xbox, you, you've only got this wireless controller in front of you. I just don't think I think it's going to be a bit more arcadey than you know what it is now. To be quite honest. Yeah, I mean, I use my Xbox. I've got an Xbox controller. I use that alone just for moving the camera. You know, I literally use that. Uh, to move it around so yeah you know, I, I don't know how they're going to get incorporated all into flying it i mean i have the tca stuff and that that does very well but as i say you know i've got keyboard mouse tca and, and xbox just about managed to fly it by myself so it's going to be they're going to have to really simplify it down to be able to make it absolutely better. yeah 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 i think that's what they'll have to do won't they definitely yeah, definitely. I know Jones's Aviation's put on. He downloaded lots of third-party sim, uh, third-party add-ons onto the same. Um, and out of his 1.8 terabyte hard drive, he's got 120 gigs left. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> How scary, isn't it? It's is just massive. It it's is. Massive. It's huge, isn't it? It really, really is. I mean, how big's the um, how, how how big's the memory on an Xbox on the new Series X? Is it just one terabyte? I think it's one terabyte, yeah. So you're gonna have to delete. Yeah, you can get some storage add-ons for them, but you know it's gonna be for people that you know don't want to pay that much money to do it because they are quite expensive storage add-ons. That is gonna be filling up the the game. You shouldn't have to do that, should you? I mean, you buy you, the, the latest Xbox, and then an hour later you have to buy a hard drive for it because you just haven't got enough room to to download one game onto it. Well, exactly. I mean, maybe maybe yeah. with the new 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 um, flights in the sort of because obviously going to have to make a new version for the Xbox. Maybe they've somehow found a way to compile it a bit and make it a little bit smaller, cut out stuff that isn't needed. Yeah, I'm sure it'll all come out at wash, won't it? Yeah, exactly. I think it'll <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be all right, just a bit arcadey rather than the PC version. I think that's definitely that's happen. So you know, yeah. Hopefully, looking forward to that. It'll just be. I think it'll really boost flight sim. Actually, suddenly we'll get a massive influx of people that wanna. You know, fl play flight sim, possibly even join Vatsim. I don't know if you'll be able to do that, but it's suddenly going to be like, oh, Vatsim, you know, maybe get a PC, you know. And so, so it's a big yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, w I was going to ask you another question as well about Vatsim. Um, now, you're sat in your um, control, I know you're not at that level yet, but if you're sat in your control tower and you're guiding, I don't know, or whatever into your, your airport, and then I come along. Pratting around behind back of you. How do you get rid of me? Dot wallop. 
Right. <laughs> so you can just delete. Can you just delete me? Basically, I type dot wallop into the chat. It's so, a moderator comes along because there's thousands of moderators, so you know they're always online. Um, right. A moderator comes bumbling along, goes, "What's going on?" And I go, "Well, he's messing around." And it's like, "Bye bye." <laughs> right. So there's there's, there's no tolerance. It's just get rid of him and and carry on yeah. doing what you're meant to be doing. It depends sort on of the thing. controller. If you're in London, you know, if you're flying around London and it's London control, they won't have any tolerance. For you. They'll be like, "Nah, bye." And straight off yeah Whereas if you're bumbling around in san juan maybe and you just make a mistake or a bit annoying i, I give you a second chance you know it all depends on the controller really but i think the general thing is if you mess around you're probably going to go so i, I think you can tell the difference between somebody who's made a mistake and somebody who's just annoying mm. you and then doing it on purpose couldn't you yeah exactly and i think that's that's it isn't it yeah and so yeah you just have to watch out yeah absolutely yeah 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 um if, if you have any more questions tom well, I was just going to mention actually um, before we sort of um, spoke about the sort of the Xbox side of things, um, something fascinating that I I saw about Batsim is that they hold events, um, sort of annually, um, and there's a couple here that I sort of want to want to talk about because these are sort of something that a lot of us people that just play flight sim right, like on the on the on a you know simple sort of basis uh, will kind of tend to do anyway, but. There's three events that I've sort of found and, and sort of researched up. Now, one is called uh, World Flight. Um, and basically, uh, it says World Flight Australia is an annual virtual round the world charity event that has been running continuously since 2011. Uh, sorry, 2001, where 11 teams from different countries in their own fixed based aircraft simulators fly to over 40 destinations around the world on VATSIM. To raise money for the Australian Royal Flying Doctor Service, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's amazing because you get full ATC coverage as well because it's an event. You know, if you want to, yeah, want throughout the entire awesome. thing. Yeah, throughout the entire thing. Yeah. And it, incredible. It's just just fascinating, and it, it goes goes on to say yeah. that sim air traffic controllers provide service throughout this event, and apparently in 2006, 15 enthusiasts conducted a 130-hour flight in a full-sized Boeing 747-400 simulator for which Qantas provided the food. Wow. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen their simulator. It's amazing. That, that to me, is, like, absolutely... <laughs> like, it's those kind of events that make you yeah. sort of think it's that... Big one. There's another big one, the uh, Vats of Cross the Pond, they call it. You know, That's you go from JFK yeah, yeah. To... Okay, that is, that is massive. That is absolutely massive. Yeah. You so... get hundreds... Of... You have to... You have to yeah. book a slot. It gets so busy. Yeah, you yeah. Have to say I'm flying to here. Yeah, busy. I was just I was just gonna say. So, uh, yeah. cross the pond is a biannual event where, uh, during which pilots complete transatlantic flights across the pond between Europe and Northern America. The events old uh, the event alternates between westbound and eastbound every six months. Certain airports are selected a few months prior for which pilots can book slots to fly for, and Vatsim air traffic controllers provide full service. Uh, for each of these airports throughout the event. The event is meticulously planned and coordinated by all major VATSIM uh, staff members to make sure that pilots enjoy their service. During the spring 2020 event, VATSIM surpassed its record for most pilots connected to the network with 3,111. Yeah, it's So amazing. that is absolutely. huge. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely vast. That's incredible. Yeah, especially if you've got you a watch book. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You what? You got a book? Um, they've slots book up quickly. You know, out of Heathrow, that goes within about an hour wow. of it being allowed. Because Heathrow's, you, know, you want to fly out of Heathrow to JFK. That's the main flagship route. You know, <laughs> um, I, I had a friend who flew a Concorde. He flew it there and back in the time it took people to just go there. So <laughs> they have a lot of fun with that stuff like that. <laughs> Black across. Wow. But uh, if on Simmerware, which we were talking about earlier, yeah, it's just a flood of green of planes just going across. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Wow. Is it something yeah. that you've uh, you've ever considered? I've I've always wanted to go on it. Sadly, times haven't quite worked out, so not quite easy to um. Well, uh, not quite easy to uh, hop, hop on ever. I've missed it a couple of times, uh, but this hopefully this time coming up, I'm definitely going to try for it. Uh, trying to schedule this round the world tour so we get to JFK in time to go back, which would be quite fun. So something like that. That'd be quite a lot of fun. If you do, we'll get you back on and you can talk to us about it. 
<laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And the, uh, the the last one is regional events. So in addition to the global international events, the VATSIM sponsors and advertises, regional events can be found daily throughout the network. These events can range from small in size, including only a few airports or facilities, to very large in size, spanning across multiple regions and facilities. Although they don't typically attract record-breaking traffic, these events have been known to draw enough pilots to simulate and even surpass real-world operations at the selected facilities. So there's always something going on. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, always something Quite going on time every time. day. And you'll get a ping pit, it goes bing bing, and you, it goes something like a, I don't know, um, it's, it's like working Wednesdays or something, and it's like Gatwick to anywhere in Germany. Um, big, big event that goes on. Uh, midweek madness, that's it. Midweek madness that goes on. That's quite crazy. Loads of stuff like that. Occasionally, when someone takes an exam, you get bing bing, um, and it pings everyone who's currently flying with Atson to, um, you know, it says this is going on, and you get like, quite a lot, yeah, for these nice little regional events. So it's a real like community. Um... Well, exactly. They're always really lovely. You know, these messages go like dong dong, hello. You know, the postman's here. Yeah, you know, you've got a message saying it's, something's taken his exam at Sophia. Come help him earn it. Really lovely, community driven. Everyone wants to help each other out. Um, stuff like that. Really lovely. Fantastic. Well, I've I've I've, I've thoroughly in, in, enjoying this chat because I'm I'm learning so much about Vatsim that I had no idea. Um, yeah, anything. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I'm I'm looking at the um, Vatsim events today, and um, it's amazing. If if anybody's listening now and you want to go onto the Vatsim website and um, just have a browse around different pages and and. And, you know, if you're into your flight simming and what have you, um, it, it, it's, it's a different level altogether. It really, really is. And it's, it really is. It's, it's opened my eyes and it's certainly fascinating just to listen to what Alex is saying, just to read some of the things what I've actually got in front of me now, you know, with these um, events that are going on and, and you know, how, how, how serious actually people take these kinds of things. And yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, really, really, they do. It's Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'll tell you what, it reminds me of, um, again, going slightly off topic, and, and me and Ian are, um, are, are fond players of, of a game called uh, Forza Horizon. They have, like, daily events that pop up. Yeah. Mm. When you're online yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. I suppose it's a bit like that sort of thing. You could be sort of just doing your own thing, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, here's an event. Do you want to try it? And then it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, all right. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> Yeah, there's some really, really good stuff, isn't there, on it? Um, yeah, um, yeah, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a, there's a couple of questions here, but uh, this this one pops up here, and it's, um, how would you how would you go about getting Vatsim on the Discord? Go about getting Vatsim on Discord? Um, yeah, we, yeah. oh, no, it's a, I beg your pardon. We could help you about getting on the Vatsim on the Discord. Maybe I'm reading that wrong. I don't know, yeah, so what he means is, um, on my Discord... I'm always online, I hop in VCs, you know, I speak to people. Um, right. I, I sort of hang out in the flights and Microsoft, Microsoft flights and official Discord, gather people from there and sort of take them into my server and I sort of, you know, sort of, yeah, with a couple of them, I get them started on Vatsim and see what I can do. You know, just as a sort of chat and slowly, you know, they, they sort of, you know, get better and better and then we fly together quite a lot. I, you know, I'll go like, I don't know, Manchester to Gatwick or something, a short flight with them. We sort of do it as a group and you get like three or four of us flying down. Something like right. that. Right. So, what he means by that is we just sort of, I'm there, him's, he's there, we help you hop on to that. And yeah. It can be quite difficult sometimes if you're not quite aware of what's going on and where you're going. It, it can I, I can imagine. I mean, I, I'm a bit of a technophobe, I would imagine, and all these di discords and then without him and the flight sim and everything like that and trying to link it all together, it's, I think it's quite daunting if you don't know what you're doing, isn't it? Well, is that, yeah, yeah, it is, can be a bit daunting. But, um, mm. If you get the hang of it, Amazing, really, really good. Oh yeah, absolutely. Once you've got your head around it, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a bit stressful getting your head around it. I had a couple of people help me out getting, getting onto it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. And Rob Brown was uh, saying as well in relation to the Xbox, um, it's probably going to be a cloud-based system. So yeah. it's, it's going to be, yeah, it, it solves the problem, doesn't it? Makes sense. You're not going to need. Yeah, you're not going to need millions of terabytes on your Xbox, are you? It's going to be a cloud-based system. No, makes yeah. sense, that. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will just again uh, jump in and as well and uh, mention that Rob Rob Brown did sort of say his goodbyes. Um, he says, "Thanks for the stream, guys. Need to bug out for the time being on the chase of a U.S. Uh, Air Force C five departure." Wow. Um, I know one of those has been into uh, Scotland over the weekend. So, or maybe two of them actually. Two have been into Scotland over the weekend. So. Um, Fine. Yeah, no, that's fine. The ditches for the planes, go for it. Why not? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> got me looking now. Uh, and in, in regards to the uh, cross the pond uh, challenge, which we were talking about, Jones Aviation says the eastbound cross the pond will be great due to the jet stream pushing you along. So, yeah, so mm. it's almost like just mimicking real life sort of thing. And you know, you, with the jet stream behind you, you know, it'll yeah. get, you, uh, get you to your destinations a lot quicker. So. Uh, that, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm I'm gonna have to try this out after after the stream and stuff. When I've got like a, a spare hour, definitely uh, yeah. give it a try and, yeah. and see if I can uh, yeah. get the hang of it. Well, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. Amazing. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask you that, Alex, um, because when you when you set up a flight on on flight sim, mm. um, normally now. Speaking from FS, FSX's point of view, when I set a flight up to say from Manchester to New York, for instance, it'll just give me a clear path, won't it? It'll just say you fly from the to there, and, and there's your pink line going across the screen, and mm. that's it. Now, obviously with FF, FSX, it doesn't take in wind and things like that, and where the jet stream is, and this, that, and the other. Now, does FS twenty twenty do that better than FSX and? Does VATSIM account for that as well when you're guiding, pl- you know, you're you're taking planes off, say, from Manchester? Yeah. So Will you, you take it? Your... Sorry, go on. No, no, sorry, I, I interrupted you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you make your own flight plan, as it were. So on the FSX, you know, you, before you spawn in, you, you choose where you want to go to and from. You can do yeah. that through MSFS, but I use an external thing called SimAware. SimBrief, sorry, SimBrief. Um, you yeah. can just find it online. It's free, uh, and it I just put in... The ICAO of the airport I'm departing from and arriving, the type of plane I'm in, um, the, you know, it, it, and then it automatically gives me a departure runway, a, a route, so different waypoints, airways, um, that are all proper, so that you don't, because of course, you know, aircraft flying different directions, you have to be at different altitudes, different yeah. airways, routes, and stuff like that. It, it calculates all of that, gives me a route. I click generate, I generate it, I then copy that into Fatsim file it and then the controllers see that and if they're not happy with it they can change it you know the clearance still i can go actually i don't want you going there you can change where you go um but that's how it works so i wouldn't make your stuff through Microsoft flight sim i'd make your flight plans through sim brief um because it makes sure you do that if you do it through flight sim it's the same as fsx you know it'll give you a straight you put where you want to go to so it'll give you a straight line across there which you wouldn't yeah. be allowed to do on VATSIM. so if you try no. it, sim brief, it works quite well Right, right, right. That's quite interesting. That so, yeah, yeah. So it's more real life in that respect as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, more real life in that because you know we're following exact routes that air, real aircraft are. Um, have you ever yeah. heard of Navigraph? If you if you pay for Navigraph, you get a sort of upgraded version of the free one, and it gives it makes it even more realistic. Gives you even more stuff. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I, I have that, and uh, it works absolutely amazing. You get more detail. But it's really just amazing because it gives you airways to follow, waypoints that are all exactly how it is in real life. Because the idea is to have it as real as possible. That is the aim of that. Thing. Yeah, well, absolutely, yeah. I totally agree with you, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm obviously not into it as, as as deep as what you are because I know I don't think I could set myself a flight up using waypoints and doing this, that, and the other using, um, you know, external apps or anything like that. I just rely on um, what FF, FSX tells me to do. Um, have you ever have you ever tried piloting in real life yet? Well, um, I've just uh, turned fourteen, so PPL is now a thing I can do. So yeah, I've already flown a plane in real life, a glider and a sort of, yeah small turboprop plane. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I loved it so much. So I'm beginning PPL, and um, that's a great way to sort of properly start. Yeah, you've somewhere. you've proper got the bug, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think we have to keep an eye on you, are we, to see see what what progresses through your uh, years. We're going to see you on the um, EasyJet TV shows, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not as an air steward. Yeah. 
<laughs> Hopefully yeah. as a pilot. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have you got some more questions, Tom? Well, I was just going to say, uh, we'll, we'll start to wrap things up shortly. So if you've got any last minute questions <clears throat> for uh, for Alex, uh, get them into the chat. We'll get them read out. But what we'll do, I mean, I, I, I'm sure everyone that's been watching uh, has, has learned all about Vatsim this evening. Um, and hopefully that sort of inspired you if you if you are a flight simmer uh, as well to, uh, to to give it a go because it's, it's inspired me to uh, sign up and, and and give it a go so uh, I might give that a go next weekend actually um, yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah see, see see what happens but um, what we'll do we'll, we'll shy away from uh, from from that some for now and we'll just sort of go through some of the, the generic questions that some people might want to know so Firstly, yes. uh, for anybody that might know, where would you say your nearest airport is and, and where are you based? Uh, G- Gatwick Airport is my nearest airport, um, for sure. But uh, I my my base is Manchester. <laughs> There's uh, some lovely scenery on flights in for it, and uh, I fly in and out there all the time. It's also, strangely, more controlled than almost Gatwick or Heathrow is. It's uh, always got controllers online at Manchester. and I, I try to fly at places that have always got controllers, so based out of Manchester, yeah. Fantastic. Interesting. Why, why do you think that is? I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I'm always surprised. Gatwick always has more controls than Heathrow. That surprises me. I'm always like, well, I don't, you know, if I was a controller and I was allowed to control in the UK, I'd definitely fly control at Heathrow. Um, so that's, that's interesting. Manchester, I, it's training base for uh, that's some controls. So, you know, it's where you first get your training. And so I think, and the UK is so popular, there's always people being trained. So I think that might be partly to do with it. You know, you, you, you've when you first finish your training, you want to control a big airport like Manchester. Um, lots of people flying in out there, so that that's you know more traffic, you know, more controllers. It sort of works like that really on Vats. And the more traffic there is at an airport, you get more controllers. The more controllers, you get more people flying. And suddenly, you build up a massive hub like Manchester. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, you will do. So I bet there's um, at certain points in certain days, there's going to be areas that aren't yeah. covered at all. There is definitely. Uh, you find about midday. There's not really any. Actually, that's not true. There's not really anything in Europe. There's a lot, though. Of course, in America, because it's a sort of just a late, late evening there. Um, yeah. Early in the morning, it's uh, nice, um, nice in America. And then this time really is the UK massively, massively busy on Simaware. Yeah, I'm just busy. looking. Uh, yeah, on Simaware now, yeah. you can see how busy UK is. Absolutely packed. So just to sort of say, there's you know, Manchester's currently got approach, delivery, ground, and tower and line. We've got London Control, um, Gatwick got Approach, Ground Tower, Bristol, Dublin, Birmingham, Edinburgh. Ev- everywhere is in the world's control. It's absolutely amazing in the Europe uh, currently. Yeah. Um, now, do you know the um, the, the screens? What you? What you, I don't know what you'd call it. The, the radar screen. What an ATC would use. Mm. Now, obviously, you have access to that, don't you? Because it's what you're using. It's what you need. Could yeah. me? Could could I just watch in on that? Could I just click on something to watch in? You can actually download the app we use um, for controlling, and you could be in what's called an observer, where you, you know, you're not controlling, but you can watch the aircraft move around on the yeah. radar screen. Um, that's quite easy to do. That's good practice as well. People quite like doing that. I've missed quite a few people do that. So I, I, I just find it fascinating watching it on uh, on a radar. Yeah, so you could like sign on in the UK as an observer and just watch all the planes yeah. move around. From yeah, so I want to do that then. So you can download something called VRC, Euroscope, VStars, all different programs that are radar screens um, that you can you can use you can use them and you can just go sign on as OBS, which is Observer, and you can just watch planes go bad. Exactly. Uh, you just download it, search it up online, literally search up Euroscope download, you search it in, and you just put your rating in and everything. Make sure you fill out all your VATS and details, and you can sign on and watch planes go by. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm gonna have a look at that later. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you yeah, any- definitely. I definitely want to look at that. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Yeah, it is. It's really, yeah. yeah, it really is. Right, sorry, Tom. No, you're all good. You're all good. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Once Ian tries that, and once he likes it, he'll get hooked to it. So. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind yeah. of person he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put me to sleep at night. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of YouTube now anyway, so I need something else to do. No. 
That's all right. I'm, I'm sure I can give you a few recommendations if you want to sort of sleep at night. Um, <clears throat> uh, what I will say quickly before we move on, uh, Joe is actually in the in the comments. He says, "Well done, guys, on a great show." So, um, hey, Joe, even if he's so not much. hosting the show, yeah, cheers, Joe. Uh, he is he's not far away from it. So, um, yeah, cheers, cheers, Joe, and, and and get well soon, and we'll have you back next week, no doubt. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, uh, away from flight sim, then um, again, um, what what's your uh, what's your favourite aircraft? Oh, <laughs> Airbus. I think the A three eighty. That would have to be my favourite A three eighty. Love it. Can't get enough of it. Flight deck's amazing. No, um, looks. I think it looks pretty cool for me outside. So I think A three eighty or A three twenty. A three twenty Neo. I do. I, I got a special spot for that. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Fascinating. I think that's the first time I think we've had the A three eighty mentioned as a um as a as a favorite. Really? Yeah. From a from a is, is that just a sim thing though, Alex, or is that uh, in real life? I haven't ever flown it on a simulator actually. Um, oh have you not? Okay, right. None of them are good enough. The Fly by wire team that made the three twenty sort of add on are actually gonna release one soon, hopefully. And I'm really excited for that. But uh, currently they have they have not, so I've never flown one. Um I've lucky enough to have been in the cockpit of one in real life. Um which is pretty amazing. Um but uh, that's it, and I just sort of we I flew on it to Dubai, and I sort of fall in love with it. Really, it's amazing. I just I love it. <laughs> wow, fascinating. Yeah. Um, are you considered to be, so? Do you just stick to flight sim, or are you like a, a plane spotter away from that as well? I I stick to flight sim mostly. Um, I sadly I don't live quite near close enough to any place, so Gatwick's still a good half an hour to an hour drive away from me. So. I don't sort of you know, sort of live close enough so I can just go, oh, you know, plane going over. Um, but of course, if if you know if we're gone holiday to an airport near an airport or something, yeah, you know, yeah, definitely love watching the planes go by and yeah, I like real world aviation. Looking at planes, that is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Um, but flights in mostly stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I think I think we'll leave that there. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave that there. Uh, we've been going for a, an hour and 24 minutes. And once again, it's, even though it's the 13th episode, and the 13th time that we've done this, it never, never, you know, surprise. Well, it does surprise me all the time how quickly the uh, the time just seems to fly by. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, thank you uh, so much for enlightening us uh, this evening, uh, Alex, about uh, VATSIM. Uh, you, you, you taught me, you've taught Ian. Um, and you've you've taught our viewers a lot about um, you know the the wonderful world of, of flight sim and and vat sim and, and everything that comes with it. So uh, yeah, so thank you very much. Well, thanks yeah, it's been much brilliant. Yeah, it's been absolutely fascinating. Well, thank you very very much. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, it was really amazing. Thank you. Not a problem. Now, what we do uh, before we uh, before we disappear, um, we do our uh, weekly shout outs to people. Um, now. Because I forgot all about him last week, <laughs> I I forgot all about him last week, and I he hasn't let me live it down. So, uh, Ian, would you like to go first with your shout out so you can get them out of the way while I remember? Yeah, it won't take long. Um, just uh, thanks to Alex for joining us tonight. Yourself, Tom, for letting me co-host it with you tonight, and uh, a massive shout out to Joe. Let's hope he gets better soon. Um, all the fathers out there who were enjoying father's day and um that's pretty much it to be quite honest and myself <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing wrong with giving yourself a shout out i think and, and obviously all the people who are in the chat as well yes and listening in tonight Definitely. absolutely yeah i'll say normally we we do the, the the guest first in terms of shout out but i'll end up forgetting ian again and i don't want and to in typical joe style i've got another list no. i haven't <laughs> no <laughs> I'll end up forgetting Ian again, and I don't want to be living that down for the, the second week in a row, so I thought I'll get him out of the way first. Yeah, no, cheers. But uh, no, Alex, if you've got anybody to shout out, you can shout out as many people as you like, and this is your opportunity. <laughs> well, Jones Aviation, firstly, thank you. He's uh, been a great friend of mine for a while. Got a lovely YouTube channel. I uh, just sort of it's similar content to me, but on X Plane. So um, thanks very much, Jones Aviation. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Orus, uh, thanks very much. You showed up earlier. Nice to see you. Hello. Thanks very much. Um, bucket. Well, thanks very much indeed. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, you two, you three. Thanks. Awesome. You're welcome. 
yeah yeah not, not a problem um i'll i'll do a few shout outs because because i can um it's my show um yeah <clears throat> i will give my first shout out to uh the uh frontline workers and nhs workers and and any sort of frontline workers around the world as we do every week for continuously uh giving us uh, you know giving everything to the uh the, the cause of of trying to combat um this uh wretched disease that is going around um you know your your hard work and that is, is appreciated by everybody um so so keep going and <clears throat> one day we you know we will get there uh we will get there very very soon um shout out to ian for doing a, a stellar job in um uh, st- a standing co-host thank you um a shout out to you alex for uh giving us your time this evening and uh, like i said enlightening us about uh, all things vaccine well thank you very very much for having me not a problem i'm, I'm sure at some point in the future we'll, we'll have you back on maybe around one of the events and stuff like we said um yeah uh, just so during it, sort of, it gets kind of boring. <laughs> yeah just just so you can sort of let us know how, how it goes and and and, oh, yeah. and teach us a thing or two about the the, the events and that um uh, shout out to our fallen comrade uh, uh, Jer as well. Um, hopefully you'll be back with us again next week. Um, and I think that's that's going to... Oh, and of course, uh, all the fathers out there. Of course, a, a shout out to my own father who is downstairs, probably not listening uh, right now because he's probably fast asleep. Um, but <laughs> um, happy Father's Day to all the, all the fathers, uh, fathers out there. Uh, right, so who will be on next week? So next week... Uh, we're diving into a completely different side of aviation. Um, we are joined by the uh, very lovely uh, Jordan Masrati. Uh, she is a former cabin crew personnel now working for EasyJet. Um, and she's going to be talking to us about all things to do with cabin crew life and uh, discuss her new job uh, that she's got into recently. Um, I won't say what because we'll keep that as a surprise. Um, it's, it's still in aviation so yeah looking forward to next week next week should be a lot of fun um, hopefully we'll have Joe back with us as well next week for next week's show um, but that's going to do it that's going to do it for this week so um, yeah it's, it's been a lot of fun um, time has flown by very very quickly um, and no doubt time during the week will fly by and we'll be on episode 14 like that so yeah uh what we'll do we'll say our we'll say our goodbyes i think that's what we do now I'm trying to think no yeah. it is what we do goodbye everybody <laughs> thanks so much youtube thanks so much okay. we'll, we'll go around the room bye. screw it why not <laughs> yeah bye <laughs> bye uh, well yeah. hold on. We're, we're still going around the room so uh we'll, we'll go with we'll go with alex first all right do you want to uh, just say bye to everybody yeah well thanks very much guys thanks very much for having me actually um so yeah, thanks very much all of you guys on YouTube for watching. Um, thanks very much for putting up with me. <laughs> um, I'll see, hopefully see you soon. So uh, thanks very much. Not a problem. Like I said, you can catch, um, you can you can talk to Alex on his Discord, which is in the description below, uh, and also follow him on YouTube uh, and of course Instagram as well. Uh, Ian, uh, do you want to say goodbye? Yeah, to just yeah. Thank thanks to everybody for listening in tonight, and thanks to you, Alex, and uh, yourself, Tom, and. Uh, We'll see you all next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Yeah, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, from, from myself, I've been Tom Whittle. This has been the Departure Lounge podcast, the home of aviation podcasts here on YouTube. And we'll do this all again next week, 7pm, with uh, Jordan Maserati. So for now, have a fantastic week, everybody. Continue to stay safe. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care.